Hello and good evening. Um, I'd like to talk to you about um, a video which was made by Jackson Crawford. Um, Jackson Crawford interviewed Daniel Tabin, an archaeogeneticist. Um, and he is currently studying on Turkic languages. And because I found his topic so interesting, and um, because um, his thoughts prove my claims, that's why I wanted to um, make a video on this. So first of all, um, I'm going to share the link um, on my YouTube channel, which you can find. Um, it starts with the 84th minute. That means after one hour and 24 minutes, you can see the chat. You can follow the chat, uh, the talk. And um, they are talking about Anatolia uh, being the crossroads, but Central Asia was more of a crossroad. So uh, Central Asia and the Turkic groups living there served more uh, to the... to the contribution of intermixing with the groups um, of the, the Turkic speaking cultures. Now, um, uh, I'm going to summarize what Daniel Tabin said. So Daniel Tabin goes deeper into the history of the genetic origins of the Turkic uh, people and the Turkish people. And uh, he does not only uh, claim that they came from uh, East Asia. Um, it was originally a mixture of both. So I'm going to explain to you now. Um, how that happened. So, um, Daniel Tabin says that Anatolia, the Middle East, was the crossroad to cultures and civilization. But Central Asia, as I said, was more of a crossroad uh, um, including East Asia, West Asia, etc. So uh, why is that? Because as Barry Cunliffe states, um, it was grassland and in that grassland it was easy to ride on horses. Um, so there were no mountains, etc. So and it was very easy for a cultivated group um, to intermix with uh, other tribes and uh, people. Um, Daniel divides the two groups of Turkish people, the, the, the Turkic people, the ancient Turkic people, into two. There was a mixture of the Bulan Kobi people. So the Bulan Kobi include the Saka, so the Scythian, uh, the Scythians. That means also they include the Eastern Iranian uh, people, um, the Sintashta uh, people, the um, Bimak people. So all this Kobi Bulan Kobi people, these uh, ancient Turkic people, they had a certain DNA 
from the Saka. Uh, they had um, a mixed DNA with the Sintashta, with the Bimek culture. So that means that ancient Turks had also Bimek DNA, they had Sintashta DNA, they had Iranian DNA, and they had, of course, Saka Scythian DNA. That formed one part of the Turkic culture. The second mixture was the Shangnu culture. That means the Shangnu nomads, they fused in the Altai region. That means there were Mongolians within this group and they formed the early Turks. So these two groups, they came together in the Ural area and they formed these early Turks. Um, okay, so that's a very important part that he mentions. Um, okay, uh, two, um, another question about the Hun DNA. Um, Daniel mentioned that the Huns DNA goes back to Eastern Scythian DNA. So the Huns had Eastern Scythian DNA and they also have the Shangnu ancestry. They have Y chromosomes and a mixture of other steppe people, Sarmatians, Alans, and even the gods, they joined the Huns later on. So which language did they speak? Um, it was a mixture of Turkic, Mongolian, Iranic, and even Yeniseyan. So you can see the vocabulary uh, of all these uh, in the Huns. So the Huns even had Turkic names, that's for sure. And in his opinion, in uh, Daniel's opinion, uh, the Huns were multi-ethnic. You can see this from the burials. So they, they all had uh, Chinese, Siberian ancestry. I mean, the DNA shows us that the Hun, the Hun uh, DNA had Chinese, Siberian ancestry. They had Northeastern Asian ancestry. Um, they had all uh, Shangnu um, ancestry, etc. So from East Asia uh, until... Northeast Asia, Chinese uh, DNA, and uh, Turkic DNA. So, um, another thing that he states is that in the Urals, that means uh, where the Huns were, uh, Turkic and Mongolic language fuses into each other. That means that uh, Turkic speakers and Mongolic speakers, <clears throat> they understood each other. And the structure of the language was Uralic and Altaic altogether. So that means the Huns had Turkic names, as I said. Um, and so that means and Jackson Crawford uh, also mentions that uh, he disagrees with the Altaic hypothesis, which I also, now I also disagree with. I first thought that, um, you know, they taught us um, that Turkish comes from the Altai family, from the Altai language family, but this is now proven wrong. So Turkish has to be thought it has to be uh, it has to be looked at more at the Ural uh, region so more to the more to the Hungarian uh, Eastern Europe region because um, Mongolic and Turkic comes together comes together at a, a, an earlier phase in the Urals. Um, it, it, it is not 
it is not in the Altai region that it starts uh, deriving. Uh, the language first comes into the connection, uh, come, comes into contact in the Urals. That means the um, Tur Turkic words and the Mongolic words and uh, all the other Siberian words, they, they all fused into each other more in the Ural region. So, that said, um, it is now clear that uh, also um, the Mr. Mr. Aaron Kachako, uh, Karakoc is also right uh, in that matter because he states, he claims that uh, Tur Turkish goes back to the Uralic uh, language family, not to the Altaic language family. So now it is uh, clearer after the statement. And uh, if the Westerners, if the Western world accepts this, uh, it will be a positive thing for the Turkish world, of course. Now, of course, Jackson also, uh, Mr. Mr. Crawford also um, stated that he disagrees with the Altaic hypothesis. And all of them disagree with that. Um, sorry. And uh, because Turkish versus Mongol Mongolian here, right? Um, another question um, in the video was about uh, the Indo-European effect uh, on the Hittite genetics. So um, how much... How much um, how much uh, Eastern hunter-gatherer DNA did the Hittites have? So it is very unclear, they said, because the Hittites cremated their dead. But uh, Daniel said that there was one individual who had 2%, I think, Eastern hunter-gatherer DNA. So there might be a possibility that there were several individuals having come from the uh, having come from uh, East Asia. Uh, so, um, but it is not, of course, it is not uh, certain because uh, the Hittites uh, cremated their dead. So Hittite, uh, in, in Hittite DNA, there was uh, more, there was more DNA seen from the Cau Caucasus. Um um, that's, yes, that's what they said. And they talked about the Proto-Hittites. Um, so the Proto-Hittites might have been a Caucasus group. Uh, and Daniel said, this group uh, might have divided into two. So the Proto-Hittites uh, in Anatolia, they, one group one group of the Proto-Hittites um, must have come from the Caspian steppe. Um, and the other group, uh, I mean, um, let me put it this way. There were two groups of uh, the Caucasus um, DNA groups, let's say. One, one group uh, came west to Anatolia, forming the Proto-Hittites, and the other Caucasus, Caucasus group went into the Pontic Caspian steppe, who mixed with the eastern hunter-gatherers uh, who formed the Yamnaya. So two groups in the Caucasus. Uh, one of them, one group came into Anatolia, uh, the other group uh, mixed with the Yamnaya. So that's uh, what I wanted to say here. Um, and uh, another thing that they talked about 
was they didn't uh, agree with Paul Hegarty's article, who uh, um, who tried to push in a way the Hittite language, or uh, he tried to form the Indo-European language with the Anatolian language, etc. So they disagree with this article. Um, they are critical um, towards his article um, about the Hittite language connections and the Proto-Indo-European connections. Uh, yes, yes. That's another thing that I criticized too. And uh, I'd like to show you uh, Daniel Cabin's, sir, Daniel Tabin's um, poster here. I took this from uh, Twitter. So here we have uh, the Bulan Kobi people. And we have here the period where you see the ancestry of the Turkic people. Right now here it says the Bulan, the Bulan Kobi are a group uh, who were the ancestors of all modern Turkic speakers. And these Turkic groups they formed the Bulan Kobi. Now, who was in the Bulan Kobi tribe? We see the Mongols, we see the Xiongnu, and we also see here uh, the <laughs> The, Scythian, the Scythians and the Sarmatians, right? So the, the Bulan Kobi not only consisted of Mong Mongolians or um, uh, Eastern hunter-gatherers, they also formed the Turkic origins uh, from the Scythians and the Sarmatians. So that's what I claim. Uh, um, if you watched my uh, previous videos, um, I, I claimed that the, the Scythians were Turks, the Proto-Turks. And now we have here a proof of Daniel Tobin, Tabin, sorry, who also has this DNA analysis, right? So if you have the DNA of certain uh, people, of certain groups, of certain tribes, you can easily make out... Uh, which tray which trace they 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 come from or where you can trace them back so uh, it is it is such a great paper and uh, i'm so happy to uh to have discovered him right he is a very young uh bright student 24 years old and here we see his uh studies now if you have a look, here we have the in orange the the Bulan Kobi DNA. We have uh, in violet the Shangnu DNA. We have uh, a bit yellow the Sogdian. Um, we have the Kura Araxis in green. Now it's turquoise actually, blue turquoise, um, which is not very. Okay, here we can see it uh, at the bottom. Then we have the Altai Neolithic, which is um, dark blue, actually, or blue, let's say. We have China, Chinese, um, but the Yellow River uh, is actually uh, not Chinese DNA, but um, Turkic DNA. That's what I know. Uh, I mean, the Yenisei part where Turks used to live, the ancient Turks. And we have Europe Iron Age. So the green part is Europe Iron Age. Now, let's have a look. Let's have a look. I'm going to look at the Hezhen. Now, they are uh, Tunguzic people. 
and they had okay they they had a, a yellow river dna together with the shongnu okay so they were tunguzic people we have uh, again the oroken who were tunguzic too it is a similar dna let's look at the other tunguzic dnas here if you go further down do we have other Tur turguzic no so uh, let's look at the turkic dna now turkic dna we don't have much china chinese dna here we have much of the shangnu um, the shangnu i think they were the proto gek turks um, in in the in the euro in the steppe area so here i mean they were the proto huns that's what i know um so the sh they have shongnu dna um dolgan yes dolgan is a turkish tribe um so we have here again uh, orange the bulan kobi here that's what uh, Daniel says. They had much Bulan Kobi um, DNA. So, um, uh, another Turkic group, we have uh, Tofalar. If you look at the Tofalar, I'm, 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 uh, I'm skipping actually the Chinese groups, right? Um, I'm only looking at the Turkic groups here because uh, my my um, main interest is, of course, the Turkic groups here. <clears throat> so Tofalar, um, if you look at Tofalar, Outlier, and 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 uh, the other parts, the other Turkic groups. Um, Uh, where is it? Tofalar. Okay, we have Tofalar, we have Totzin, we have Tuvian, um, we have Kakasia, we have Kakas, we have uh, again Kakas, we have Kakas, we have the mountain, mountain shore, Tuba, we have Chelkan, Altaian, we have the Altaian DNA. We have Uyghur DNA, the Hazara DNA, we have Kazakhs, the Kyrgyz DNA. They are all Turks, all Turkish DNA, or Turkic DNA, better say. So we have the Turkey, the, the Kyrgyz DNA from Kyrgyzstan, from Tajikistan, and uh, then we have Siberian Tatars. They have also Turkic DNA. So all these Tatars, all these groups are Turkic. So we have Zabolotnia Tatars, who are Turkic, Uzbeks, Turkmens, Kazan, um, Bezermian, I never heard of that tribe, Mishar Tatar, Nogais, we have uh, again Tatars, we have Chuvashs, uh, they were the first uh, Western Turkic groups uh, in Europe, the oldest Turkic groups, the Chuvash people. We have Kumuk, they are also Turkic. I didn't know that Kalmuk uh, is actually a Mongolian tribe. Um, we have the Balkar, the Karachai, the Nogai from Cherkessia, they are also Turkic. So uh, Turkic groups are included everywhere, <laughs> that's what I see. So that makes me happy. Um, and we have the Nogai, again, from uh, St St Stavropol. Okay, so if you look here, the Turkic groups. Um, we, let's say, look at the Tofala group. Uh, we have very small Yellow River DNA here. Let's look at the Yellow River DNA. Uh, it, it, it increases in the Uyghur uh, part. Yeah, and in the Hazar, 
uh, in the Hazar Turks, uh, it is even uh, like one fourth of that DNA. And um, in the Dungans, for example, in the, no, sorry, that's Chinese, I'm sorry. Um, so not much, not much Yellow River here. But I think the Uyghurs have it most here among the Turkic people. Right. Um, then we have the violet part in the Turkic people. So who has the most one? So the, to the Todzin have the most one of the violent DNA. The violet, sorry, not the violent. Um, the Tuvinians. We have the Kakas, um, we have the Altai uh, violet DNA here, the Kazakhs, we have the Kyrgyz, and we have the Tajiks, etc. The Kyrgyz from Tajikistan. So, um, yes. And also we have it in the Nogai Turks, so the violet DNA. And this is the Shongnu, okay. So here we have the Shongnu DNA. If we look at the, the orange part, the Bulan Kobi, and we look at the Turkic people here, the Dolgans have it. Um... The Tofalars have it where, okay, it's not that much, but most, most of them here have it. The, the Turkey, the Turkish people have it m mostly. Yeah, it is a very large amount that you can see here, especially the, the Chelkan Altaian group has it most. Um, and the Tatars here have it most. Here the Tatars have it most. So we are mostly related to the Tatars then. That's what I can say. So because the Chuvash they have it, right? The Tatars have it most. The Siberian Tatars also have it. The Altaians have it. They are also Turkic. The Tuvalars have it. The Kakas have it. Uh, and then we, okay, Kakas, the Kakas have it. So, and the Dolgan Turks have it. Yes, yeah, so this is the Bulan Kobi uh, Turkic people, or the Turkic DNA, the Bulan Kobi. Um, and we also have the yellow part, but... Let's see what the yellow part is. It's Sogdian DNA. Um, and what about the Europe Iron Age? Now, let's look at the Europe Iron Age and the Turkic people here. I'm quite interested here. Here we have the Tofalar. They have European DNA. Um, we have the Kazan Tatars. We have the Bazermian. We have the Tatars here. So the Tatars, they are all Turkic, right? And they have European DNA. So Europe, listen to this. Um, the Chuvash, they have most, they have the most European DNA because they lived in Europe, but they still live in Europe, although they are about uh, one and a half million left only. And here we have, of course, the Russians, right? The Russians have the most European DNA here. But very interesting that the Russians didn't mix that much. <laughs> Can you see it? Right? They have the most uh, European DNA and they, they have the, the orange one, the Bulan Kobi. So they mixed together with the Turks, actually, here. So if this is Turkish DNA uh, and you have the Russians... So the Russians are not completely European. They have a little bit of Turkish blood in them. So, yeah, so that was the paper. It's, it is very nice. Here we, we see 
uh, the other uh, contributors to the paper. Um, and here there is a map. I don't understand that much from this part, actually. And it says here, let's sum it up. So here we see the Eurasians uh, in figure one. I think this is figure one. Uh, and it says, it says, uh, I do, I do, a diverse set of Eurasians are well modeled with a seven rotating source model. Rotating source populations are Bulan Kobi. They are a Huno Sarmatian pyramid group from the upper up river of the Altai Mountains. So they were a Hunnic Sarmatian group forming the Proto-Turks. The Shangnu from Mongolia. Okay, the Shangnu were from Mongolia. Uh, the Sogdians, they were from Kazakhstan. Okay, now here we learn who the Sogdians were. And the Kura Araxes uh, cultural group from the Caucasus. The ancient North Eurasians um, forming the steppe. The hunter-gatherers from the Altai Mountains. The Yellow River farmers. The Iron Age individuals from the Netherlands. So these were from the Netherlands. That's interesting. The green part is from the Netherlands. Wow. So, the permanent outgroups are ancient Cameroonians. Neolithic hunter-gatherers from the Amur River Valley. A Caucasian hunter-gatherer from the Georgian Kotias site. Neolithic Iranian farmers from the Ganj Dare. Uh, early Iron Age individuals from the Netherlands again. And... A N E individual from Afontova Gora in Russia, Bronze Age Sintashta culture, group individuals from Russia and ancient Taiwanese individuals. So they were a multicultural group, but all, all of them were from Siberia. That's what, what we can say, except the Netherlands, the the European part. Turkic speakers can be differentiated from Mongolic speakers by higher levels of Bulan Kobi ancestry. That means Mongolic speaking groups, that means Hamnigan, Buryat, Mongols, etc. can be seen to have extremely little Bulan Kobi ancestry. So if they had little Bulan Kobi ancestry, which Turkic people had, that doesn't that doesn't prove that we came from the the Altai language family. That proves that we that we were more Uralic uh, in the in, in the language family. Then, because uh, we uh, we lived more in the in the steppe. The the Turkic people lived more in the steppe. Uh, rather than uh, East Asia or Central Asia. So it was further down to um, East Europe. Yes. I mean, very close to Eastern Europe, it, the step, the step belt. So Turkic speakers can be differentiated from Mongolic speakers. This part is important by higher levels of Bulan Kobi ancestry. Because we have higher levels of Bulan Kobi ancestry, that means uh, the, the ancestry together with the Huns, uh, we cannot be considered uh, an Altaic uh, language family group. I mean, uh, we are related, but not that much as the Uralic part, the Uralic branch. Mongolic speaking groups, again, Buryat Mongols can be seen to have extremely little Bulan Kobi ancestry. And then it goes, Turkic groups, including ones with extremely high East 
Eurasian ancestry, such as the Dolgans, can be seen to have consistent Bulan Kobi ancestry. So even the Dolgans, who had Eastern uh, Eurasian ancestry, uh, they didn't coincide with uh, Mongolian. The Hazara and the Uyghurs, who have overall similar levels of East and West Eurasian ancestry, have clearly different levels of Bulan Kobi and Shongnu ancestry. So they were Turks, right? The Hazara and the Uyghurs, they are Turks, but they don't have much Bulan Kobi ancestry. So that means uh, they had a more a Uralic uh, language impact. And again, it says the Bulan Kobi ancestry is found across all Turkic groups. So what does this mean? This means that we were closer to the Uralic uh, family group rather than the Altaic family group, or let's say the, 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 the branch. From the Caucasus to Siberia to China, Turkic groups all have some level of Bulan Kobi ancestry. Most also have Shangnu ancestry, and the groups that can be modeled without Shangnu ancestry have little Eastern Eurasian ancestry. You see it here. We don't have much Eastern Eurasian ancestry. So there are some there are some scholars or some people who want to push us into the Eastern Eurasian uh, ancestry. We don't have that much. We more have a Caucasian ancestry. Uh, we have more uh, the Bulan Kobi ancestry, which are the Proto Huns. And uh, it says here the Sarmatians, right? But um, we don't have we, we don't have much. Um, I think uh, the eastern the eastern the Eastern um, uh, Asian ancestry. Um, okay, and then it says Hazara. Did I say the second part? No, wait a minute. Yeah, I said Bulan Kobi ancestry is found across all Turkic groups. I read that. From the Caucasus to Siberia to China, Turkic groups, I re I'm repeating this, all have the same level of Bulan Kobi ancestry. We all have the Hunnic Sarmatian ancestry. So we are, we, we, our ancestors were more uh, living in the steppes. We were more, we were more uh, contributing to the, to the Hungarians and to the Ukrainians. And we were, we were the proto-Turks living in Europe. And also, we were the Scythians. That proves that we were the Scythians. The, 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 the Scythians that uh, went into Europe. Because it says we had Scythian DNA. I mean, um, I think the Shong, the Shong Nu, no. Um, so several, several, I think the, the, the Bulan Kobi had Scythian DNA, that's what I said. Um, so that's not what, what I said, that's what um, no, Daniel said. And I, of course, um, agree with this, I strongly agree with this. So, and I thank them all, um, uh, the ones that contributed to my new idea that uh, Turkish is more from the Uralic language branch than from the Altaic language branch. So, and um, I'm continuing the last two parts. Most, most uh, Turkic groups um, also have Shongnu ancestry and the groups that can be modeled without Shangnu ancestry have little Eastern Eurasian ancestry. So that means um, in, in Turkic ancestry, we have 
the proto Mongol Mongol ancestry. Yeah, we 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 also had uh, Mongolians uh, among Turkic people, but if we don't have any Mongolian ancestry, that means uh, we didn't have any, we didn't have much Eastern Eurasian an ancestry. Uh, that puts us back, I think, uh, into the Caucasus region uh, and into the West Asian region. And, uh, yes, uh, last it says other forms of ancestry are more variable. And here we have another chart, which is uh, interesting. So if you look at... Uh, the early Anatolian farmers, they are in pink. We have the Bimek culture here in orange. We have Sintashta, which is light green. Um, we have the early hunter-gatherers. No, no, the European hunter-gatherers, I'm sorry. And, and the Anatolian hunter-gatherers, I think. Uh, the A is uh, red. And the, the, the European hunter-gatherers is... Um, um, also black. Uh, sorry, what, what, what am I saying? Red. So Anatolian and European is the same color. Uh, we have the Baikal uh, DNA, which is dark green. We have the Amur River, I think, which is very close to China. And we have the Yellow River, which is also close to China and where lots of Turks live. So if you look at China, they only have the Yellow River ancestry. If you look at the Xiongnu, uh, which are, I think, the Mongolic, Turkic tribe, uh, they have um, the Amur River, they have Baikal, and they have a little bit of Chinese uh, ancestry. I mean, Yellow River. We have the Bulan Kobi. Now, if you look at Bulan Kobi, we have again Baikal, we have uh, Sintashta. Wow, we have Sintashta and Bimak. Here you see, this was in Europe, the Bimak and Sintashta culture, right? That that was in 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 uh, at the step uh, in Europe um, together with the Yamnaya. That's great, the Bulan Kobi. So our ancestors, they were mostly in Europe rather than uh, in, in Asia and Anatolia. Uh, okay, then we have Kyr the Kyrgyz Saka from Iron Age. Now very, very here, you see here, these groups, they all had Bimak Sintashta in their DNA. Now, who were these Turkic groups? They were, as I said, the Bulan Kobi, which is the, uh, the, the Huns, and the, um, uh, what did I say first? The Huns and, uh, sorry, uh, I forgot. Sarmatians, exactly. The Sarmatians and the Huns. So here you see, who has Sintashta and Bimak? Bulan Kobi has them. Here, DNA tells it, right? So uh, the Western world denies this. So here is, the, here is the DNA. I mean, you cannot deny it. You must accept that we lived more in Europe than maybe your ancestors. Your ancestors came from Anatolia. Our ancestors were in Europe. They came to Anatolia, vice versa. So, Bulan Kobi, as I said, has Bimak and uh, Sintashta. The Kyrgyz Sarkas. So they claim that the Sarkas were Iranian. Here we have Kyrgyz. Kyrgyz are Turks. And if you say Kyrgyz Saka has Bimak and, uh, uh, and Sintashta culture, they were Turks. They were proto-Turks. Uh, they were Scythians. So they, they had nothing to do with Iranians. Here you see it. And we have Kazakhs, Saka, Kazakh Saka. So Kazakhs, Kyrgyz people, they are all Turkish people. Now, I wonder 
I wonder how many Iranians uh, are going to claim that the Kyrgyz and the Kazakh people were Iranians. No, no. You must accept it that the Bulan Kobi, the Kyrgyz, the Kazakhs, the Sogdians, uh, and again, again, the Sakas here, they all have, they all have the BMAC and Sintashta ancestry, which were in Europe. Now, very interesting, very interesting. The early Anatolian farmers are pink. And here we have the Caucasian hunter-gatherers. They are um, blue, but has nothing to do with the Russians. Here we have the Kotias. No, not the Kotias. The early Anatolian farmers. Now, if you, if you look at the early Anatolian farmers, no, they were the Kotias, I'm sorry. So the Caucasian hunter-gatherers. They were the Russians and the Armenians. So the Russians and Armenians were actually furthermore away from the Turks here, right? So the Turks were more in Europe than the Russians and the Armenians. Yes, yes, that's how it formed. Very interesting. So this is such a great article so this is such a great article and here i'm going to um post the twitter link from uh daniel tabin of course um onto my youtube page so that you can uh analyze it right so here it goes on uh, i don't want to uh, put it too long this article and here we uh, again have uh the other admixtures with the Bulan Kobi ancestors. So it says here, here you see an admixture uniquely identifying the Bulan Kobi ancestry as a specific component of modern Turkish ancestry. So we all have a Bulan Kobi ancestry in us. That means we are all Huns, right? We are deriving, we are descendants of the Huns like the Magyars, like the Hungarians. So that makes me so proud. That makes me so proud. Um, so, and here we have the Sakas, the Kanjus, the Sarmatian groups from Kazakhstan. They show minimal amounts of Bulan Kobi components. So they have Bulan Kobi, but not that much. So the Kazakhs here. Bulan Kobi individuals have nearly their entire ancestry coming from this component. This similar ancestry of Sisio Sarmatians and Bulan Kobi shows that components is driven by Bulan Kobi unique drift. All modern Turkic groups share this Bulan Kobi ancestry. I love this sentence. This provides another piece of evidence. Turks share drift uniquely with Bulan Kobi as opposed to other late Iron Age Scythio Sarmatian groups. I always claim that Scythians are proto-Turks. No, I mean, not many wanted to believe me. And uh, in, in, on the internet, uh, they always claim that uh, Scythians were Iranians, blah, blah, blah. Here, here you have it. Here is the proof. The DNA doesn't, doesn't lie. It says here, Turks share uniquely uh, an ancestry with Bulan Kobi. And it is the late Iron Age Scythia Sarmatian group. So the same DNA. And we have an admixture uh, of the Turks and Mongols. Um, so this, this, I mean, I'm, I'm skipping this, right? This is a bit too complicated. But it says here something about the Iranians. So let me read this. It says our uh, QPADM model, figure one, of modern Turks shows them to be a mixture. Okay, so we are a mixture of Xiongnu, that means Mo 
Mongols. And Bulankobi. Bulankobi are the Huns um, and the Sarmatians uh, in Europe. As well as, ver I mean, in the steppe. As well as various levels of Chinese. So we have um, especially the... Uh, the ones who are at uh, the east, the East Asian part, the Turks who live at the East Asian part, they have more DNA from the Chinese. Maybe we not that much. Um, non Bulan Kobi Iranic, so we also have Iranic uh, mixture. We have Caucasian mixture, very much Caucasian, especially the, the Oz Turks, they have a Caucasian mixture. Caucasian DNA, that's proven now. We have Siberian DNA, very much Siberian, and European ancestry. So, and this admixture run shows, shows what? The same features. So we have the same features. And then it goes on. Our QPADM models show that Tungusic and Mongolic groups have minimal Bulankobi ancestry. So if you look at the Mongolic and Tungusic groups, they have not that much uh, uh, Bulankobi ancestry, while the Turkish groups have them in higher levels. This can be also seen in the above admixture result, which I showed you. And last sentence. Patterns of admixture proportions are similar between two different methodologies. For example, the Northern Altaic Chalkans have more Bulan Kobi ancestry with the South Southern Altaians. So, if you go to the Northern Altai, you have more Bulan Kobi ancestry than the Southern Altai. Yes, that was uh, the summary of two um, very interesting articles on my claim, which proved that my claim is correct. I only waited for I only I I, I only waited for these uh, proofs, and um, thank uh, thank God, uh, several. Very wise, very clever scholars helped me. Thank you, uh, Jackson Crawford, for this. And uh, also, Daniel, uh, I wish you lots of luck in your work, uh, in your studies. Um, best for the future. And also, of course, um, driving the shift from Altaic to Uralic. Uh, language branch. There I have to thank uh, Mr. Eren Karakoc, of course. Right. So, um, that was my talk. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope it was fruitful. Um, and please, please tell this everyone. This is a very important proof that we are more from the Alta, uh, from the Uralic uh, part than from the Altaic uh, part. Um, and of course, about the DNA, you, you, you have to you have to share this um, and tell every every friend that this is our DNA. So Turkish DNA, Turkic DNA is that rich. Here you have it here. You must show this everyone. Yes. Thank you very much. Bye-bye and good night.